Jason Chen from Music Never Sleeps, and he's one of the celebrities for uh, the Comcast float, and I'm super excited to interview him. Uh, where did I go? <laughs> oh, I'm terrible at this. <laughs> so Jason, um, I watched a lot of your covers and your, your original music. Um, can I just say that I'm very excited to see Asian Americans doing music and the arts and on YouTube. Oh, yeah. And uh, I guess, how do you, do you feel any pressure about kind of representing Asian Americans and Chinese men and like in the arts and singing and... You know what? Not really. No? Uh, maybe at maybe at first when I started, but now I'm just, I'm just happy, just doing my own thing. Uh, I'm comfortable. You know I mean, I'm not stressed anymore. Now I'm kind of just, you know, but I, I used to be. I used to be very stressed. About what What were you stressed about? Like, I think I was just young. You know, I've always wanted to be like, always keep my numbers high. I was always wanted to like get the views and whatever. But now I'm kind of, I'm just, I'm good. I'm just comfortable with being myself. Yeah. That's right. Because a lot of your fans, when I interviewed them, they said yeah. it was very important to them that you were Chinese and Asian, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that. And now you sing uh, music in Chinese. Do oh, you yeah. do you translate some of the lyrics? Because I okay, so I'm a big BTS fan, and uh, I I really love your version. With, I think quote oh, your French and Chinese version oh, yeah, 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 of uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. truth and told. Yeah. So did you translate that yourself? Yeah. So um, to your first point, uh -huh. I've always made it a point to uh, do Chinese music mm -hmm. from when I first started because I always felt like no one really like. Shows K-pop and you love. I mean, C-pop and you right, love. Yes. Plenty of people show K-pop love. Yes. I also like K-pop, but so I always wanted to do like Jay Chow, JJ Lin, Lee Home. I always wanted to like make them more uh, spread their awareness here as well. And um, for the BTS song, yes, I did. So Chloe, she did the French stuff, and I did the Chinese stuff, and we kind of put it together. Oh wow! And then do you also make the musical arrangement as well yourself? I do not. Okay. So I have a producer who does. That. Oh, cool! Very cool. And um, I guess I can. Uh, <laughs> um, now I'm all nervous. Don't be nervous. So I run a site where I talk a lot about like bilingual homeschooling my kids and getting them literate and um, I guess fluent in Chinese. And um, how did you have to bone up on your Chinese in order to? translated or did you or were your was your Chinese already that good and then if so how did you get that so it was interesting so my my parents insisted I take Sunday Chinese school uh, growing up but that only does so much because it's one day a week for like two hours and then I took Chinese in high school Chinese in college but again it only does so much uh, <laughs> My Chinese really improved when I dated a girl who only spoke Chinese. Oh! Yeah. Okay. So that really forces you. All right. That is not a good tip for for eight year olds. But okay. <laughs> That's not a good tip for eight year olds. For eight, if you're eight, just know that you will be very grateful if you learn an extra language. Yeah. You will. And then, um, were your parents supportive of you being in the arts? Because it's you know, that's not a. We're all forced to take extracurricular music stuff, but no one wants us in it. So were, were they upset? Were they happy? So it's, it's funny because um, I sing now, but I actually started playing violin when I was five. And my, my parents were very insistent on me like joining orchestras and, and all that. Um, and actually, when I started getting like better at violin, and I was like, oh, maybe I should you know do music for a little bit. Like, no, no. <laughs> We just want you to be good, but not like too good. Right, right. So um, they weren't against me doing music because I had already graduated college and I quit my job to do music. Um, I think there's a very dis important distinction uh, between like choosing to do it as opposed to like having that as your priority, like growing up and not going to school and saying I'm going to do music. Oh, I see. Yeah. So like having a backup plan in case. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. And then, how do they feel about it now? I mean, they still ask me like when I'm gonna get a real job. You know, they're still like, oh, so so how's that music thing going? Like, That's so funny. you're gonna get a real job? But they, they they they're supportive now. Okay. My mom and dad they like secretly watch my videos. Do they do they secretly like brag to all the aunties and uncles like, hey, my, my son's like a YouTube star? Like, no. We're not that kind of family. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we all kind of just yeah. Okay. No, no, no bragging. No bragging. So would what? 
would you um, what would you have wanted to hear from your parents? Like, how would you have wanted your parents to support you? And for us, for the people who are older, who have kids, who might be interested in music, what would you, how would you have liked us to support you? In an ideal world, um, just be very supportive in any possible way. But I feel like if you're too supportive, then uh, there's no real drive and real passion, right? <laughs> like when I was doing it, I was like, look, I gotta quit my job, so I gotta make sure this is what I wanna do, and I know this is gonna be hard work, and it's not gonna be like fame and glory and riches. Um, so I think if, you're, if your kids are very into it, you give them a chance, and if you really see them, like, and you're, you're like touched by them, you're like, wow, like, they're really doing this. They've been starving for two months and they can't make rent, but they're still holding on to this and they're not discouraged. Mm -hmm. At some point, uh, it'd be okay to help them, but maybe not like too supportive right off the bat. Then then they get entitled. And, ah, it's I see. Different. There's a, yeah, it's, it's tough. It's tough. Okay, well, maybe we'll, we'll have to figure out the right balance. There's, <laughs> balance is key, exactly. Yeah. So, what what's your favorite part about doing music? Do you, do you like, do you prefer doing the covers? Do you prefer doing your own music? Do you, what, what? My favorite part of doing music is uh, original music. Okay. Uh, I think everyone would agree with that. Probably, yeah. Um, covers are great to build a fan base and they're great to like find your own sound. I ironically, because you do so many different types of music that you kind of develop your own sound. From ah. Covers. But um, when you do covers, it's it, it's a it's also balanced because the more covers you do, the less inspiration you have to do like your own music. So there's a cover, uh, there's a balance between like what makes the most business sense and what's like good for like your artist identity. Mm -hmm. And then of the music process, do you prefer the lyrics or the, the writing the music or like what what's your favorite part of the songwriting process? The most important thing to me is the concept and the lyrics. So uh, I know a lot of a lot of people write differently. Some people they, they need like a beat or a production to write to. Mm -hmm. I generally like I need to feel something. Like, I'm like oh I really want to write a song about being numb to something or being like betrayed or being like happy. And then I'll be like okay this is how I want the chorus like the words to be like the lyrics have to be revolved around these couple concepts. And then I'll like find music that like fits. Got so it. I kind of do a reverse. No that's yeah. that's. That's how I used to write. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, we're similar. Yeah. yeah. And so, for your fans, for your longtime fans, because I met a lot of them today, um, do you have any projects coming up or anything you want to promote or stuff you want people to listen to? I actually just released an, uh, an EP uh, a couple months ago. And uh, this one was really hard because I actually have like a stable life now, so my <laughs> emotions aren't like up and down. Right. But. One of the songs was dedicated to my girlfriend. Oh! And, uh, she's actually in the music video. Very nice! And uh, we shot it at the place where we first met. So oh. that's going to be out at the end of the month in February or early March. Okay. So be on the lookout for that. All right. And then do you have any goals for the next year, three to five years, like long-term goals? To stay relevant. Okay. Yep. So that I can still do this okay. in whatever capacity, either as a vlogger, a musician, a songwriter. Still be here in five years. It would be great. That's awesome. Thank you so much Thank for your you time. So much.